Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I want to talk to you about finding the right composition for shooting a sunset at the beach in California. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I am a French photographer from the beautiful city of Paris, France. And I'm doing a challenge, 30 videos in 30 days. This is video number eight. And in this video, I want to walk you through my process. Uh, a while back, I went to the Real Roger Beach in Los Angeles, California. It's a really nice beach where you have, it's one of these beaches where you have a lot of rocks, but you have also the sun heading west. So when there is a good sunset, it's there that it's happening. I prefer that for photo than, uh, if you know the area, than Santa Monica, because there's a lot of people and you only have the Santa Monica Pier, there's no rocks, I love to have rocks. So Will Roger is a good pick for me. And if you're in Los Angeles, go check it out. Anyways, so here is my little adventure at Will Roger Beach. Bonjour. So I want to show you a little bit how I work. Uh, this was a shot that I did a while back ago at, uh, in Los Angeles at Will Roger Beach. One thing that I do because I don't, uh, I'm not so far away from Malibu and Will Roger Beach. And so it's about a 25 minutes ride. So, you know, around four or five o'clock, I often look at the sky and, you, I, you know, if there is clouds, then I decide to take a, you know, a little ride to the beach. And that's what I did that day. And I want to show you the, the, the bad photo, the good photo, and really my process. So I started off a bit earlier. Usually what I do um, is I always look for a foreground element because, you know, having a nice sunset and water for me is not enough. And on Will Roger Beat in Los Angeles, you have this sort of weird, I have no idea what that is, sort of metallic, rusted, rested thing here on, on the water and I thought I could make a cool, uh, you know, foreground element. So, but I came, it was a little earlier, it was still golden hour, the, you know, the, the, the sky was, uh, the sun was pretty high. And uh, one thing that I also do, if you look at my settings, I'm going to press I, so you can see my settings. I was at one, f one second F8 ISO 100 at 28 millimeter with my 1635. So, I was trying to, uh, I think I must have had some kind of like a variable filter because it was a lot of light. I'm always trying to be at a one second exposure because I find one second exposure with wave, you know, you get the, the fuzziness from the wave, but you still get the shape of it. So anyway, I started shooting, you know, I tried different settings. Every time, you know, the wave comes, it gives you a different look every time. You know, of course, I always try to be at ISO 100. And then I started doing some bracketing, you know, so a normal, an under and an overexposure. You see the overexposure is four seconds. You see how four seconds makes everything kind of flat compared to one second where you still get like the feeling of the wave. Anyway, so I did that for a while, you know, try different things, try moving around the thing, you know, had a few blurry shots because of the water. The water was pushing my tripod. I had my tripod in the water. And so, you know, that's, uh, you know, a blurry shot. And I think it's interesting to show you like, also, you know, the, the, the photos which were not good. If I only show you the b good photo, then it's kind of hard to learn, you know. So I tried this, you know, I went on this sort of structure to s put it on this on left. I'm just, you know, I think landscape is all about finding the right foreground element. Oh, this one is kind of cool, but this, you know, I, li I like the wave, how, you know, how they, you see that's one second, one second I think is nice. But I, you know, I don't like the fact that the sky is not boring. So I just went the other side. The sky was there and I was looking the other side. Okay. And then, so I was waiting, 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 waiting. And then I, I found some other rocks further down the road. And the sun started peeking through. Uh, and I'm like, oh, this is really interesting. Uh, so that can be kind of nice. Uh, so I started doing, you know, some bracketing with, uh, with that peaking sun. And, uh, you know, I was just trying to find some kind of good composition with the rocks there. You know, not too much rocks, not enough rocks. It's kind of, uh, you know, in waiting for the right light. So I tried many things. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you everything. But I don't like this because we have the poles there. There's too much rock. The water is not nice. Let's see this one. This one is kind of cool, but the sky is still not that great. Uh, this one is not bad but the sky was not that great. I knew the sky was going to change. The sky was changing every second. And what I'm showing you is the raw files. Also, the problem with this type of photo is that, you know, you don't have something to look at. You got a lot of rocks here, a small rock there. I'm like, no, I need to get closer to that rock. I need to get closer to that rock to get something more interesting. Something like this, you know, so that the subject becomes the rock and the sun. 
And the problem is that at the time I was using an ND filter, and ND filter, you know, does a lot of glare. And now I don't use ND filter; I use that app on Sony. Anyways, to make a long story short, the first one that I kind of like, I gave a two star to this one. I thought this was was kind of more balanced because the rock is more visible. Uh, I sort of manage in one exposure to uh, to get kind of everything right. Uh, so what so what I usually do is I right away the first thing that I do is I bring down the highlights to see if I have enough data in the sky and and I don't want and I think that's kind of good enough. I like the way it works, so I'm just gonna crush my blacks do my white and I just do like a very fast retouching at first I don't do like an extensive retouching I'm just trying to see if the photo works you know I'm gonna take uh, that out but I don't take I just take the biggest sensor dust that I see not even one of them and I just go through my photos really fast and do like a really quick retouching uh, for example I'm gonna do a little you know linear filter there just to see and I'm just trying to get the feeling is this photo gonna work or not you know uh, maybe do another one here to close a little bit the photo and I'm thinking, yeah, that kind of that could work. That could be a cool shot. I think it's too blue. Let's see what daylight is going to give me. Daylight is much warmer. I think daylight with a little bit of magenta would do great. So I'm like, oh, this photo has potential, you know. And maybe then I'm going to spend time doing HDR on it, you know, and try to get the best, you know, try to get maybe, I don't know, uh, some more details there but I kind of like that so when I you know when I do this sort of first pass retouching I press command shift C to you know to, to copy in memory what I did because usually you know the next photos will have this kind of the same look and as I go along I always always take uh, sky photos because when there's a good sky I like to take sky photos and um, so now this is another viewpoint but I think this one has too much rock so I didn't pick this one uh, let's see what else did I pick um, this one has no rocks at all. I'm like, yeah, why not? But it's kind of missing some rocks. You know, I can press Command V to see what the retouching that it would do. And of course it doesn't work. So I have to boost the exposure, you know, the blacks, the whites. And, and I'm like, why not? But I, I think, you know, we're missing a little bit of one rock that should be there. So, you know, I was playing around with that, you know, of course, messing it up because of the water was moving my tripod. I was taking photos of the sun as I was getting along for my sun. Uh, sunset collection try to shoot the other way around and uh, and finally uh, went back to my original position and did this this one I picked because I kind of like so I'm going to press command V and yeah command V I think this one has potential this one has potential I think it's cool so and this one also I picked this one so that's the same one but closer command V to just paste what I've done and of course it's too too dark but it just gives you a little bit of sense of what it's gonna look like. I'm like, yeah, maybe this one I'll, I'll do more work on. Okay, and um, what about this one? Uh, th the sun started to be really cool and I really wanted that structure. So Command V to put, and yeah, pretty good, but I need to adapt it now because it's getting darker. So I'm gonna see my black point. I'm gonna make my black sprite and my white brighter. Uh, maybe not bring down the highlights, open up the shadows more and add some contrast. And I like the white balance. I like that photo. I think that photo is kind of cool. Um, so I'm going to press Command Shift C to put this into memory because now the light has changed. And as I'm going to go further in my roll, it's it's going to change a lot. And what else did I pick? So I just try like different things, you know, moving away from the uh, from that structure, uh, you know, going uh, you know going uh, uh, you know just change. And every time the wave came. Uh, you know, I get a different wave formation, so I just kept on trying and kept on trying. And uh, let's see, this is one that I picked. This one is already kind of retouched. Uh, yeah, the sky was getting crazy there. I thought that was kind of cool. And what else did I pick? And I started doing photos of the sky again, because I like to collect skies. I'm a sky collector. And then last but not least, I really, you know, at the end of the night, I really went away. And this one, if I press Command V, it's not going to work. It's going to be really too dark. Yeah, it's too dark because it was really dark. So you can hold on the option key. And I'm just going to make this whole photo a little brighter. I don't want to burn. And most of the time I have bracketing. So if I pick a photo and I'm like, oh, this is really good, you know, and I really want to print it. Like, for example, on this one, I, I love this one. The problem is that here it's completely burned. So uh, once I have picked up the one that I like, Okay, this one, I think the white balance is too whatever. 
let's go back to daylight yeah let's go to cloudy and sh and shade I don't know I think on this one I'm gonna go for the daylight look I don't want it to be all warm uh, and so I'm like yeah I kind of like that the problem is not I've totally burned the Sun you see here there is no more information and if I bring down the highlights I'm not sure I even get any information you can see that uh, by holding the option key and clicking white here you see I can bring down the whites I mean now I got more details but let's see do I have an underexposed photo of that ver no I did not so I messed up on this one uh, here I did some bracketing oh this one I didn't do any bracketing but this one I did bracketing so I could use this three you know but you know I don't really care about the details that's there I don't really care so I think this one is good and what else did I pick anything else yeah that was one last one that I picked uh, and did I do any bracket you see but this one has a lot of noise here so I might use the uh, you do, do something in Photoshop for this one let's see here so that's the normal exposure uh, that I did oh I know it's an HDR I did with Aurora HDR so that is one like this one like this and one like this and I'll show you how to do HDR with Aurora in another video but anyway I just wanted to show you that's the final result so you know at the end of the day what I picked up from that trip and and of course I would spend more time is and this is more about composition this one this one I kind of like this one mm, I'm not sure the sky is kind of too much on this one I like this one and you know so w when I go out I take like you know two three hundred photos and then I you know I do this process where I just r very fast retouch one and I press community I don't like this one at all this one I really like and uh, this one I really like and this one I really like and this is an HDR one I'll show this to you uh, uh, like you got to read the texture that's kind of crazy I don't know I like this one probably my favorite of that day is this one and this one that's the two that I like the most so that's how I do it that's how I you know when I come back from the beach or from from a, a landscape shoot I I go through really time and then I spend more time you know on, on retouching one photo but that's gonna be for another time all right guys so if you did like this video please like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you didn't do it yet also, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think of the video. Uh, tell me what you want to learn in that 30 days. I'm giving a whole bunch of tips on business, on anything. Just leave me a comment and tell me what you would like to learn, what you would like to know from me. Last but not least, I'm also doing this video to promote my movie coming out, The Hollywoodans. It's on pre-sale on 77 stores on the iTunes store, exclusively on the iTunes store for now. And if you can take a moment and pre-order it, I will love you forever. It's a comedy about Hollywood. It's a comedy about reaching your dreams. And you will find all the information in the link here. It's $12.99 in the US, uh, be, uh, under 10 euro in, uh, in Europe. And I hope you will like it as much as I did doing it. Here is some of the trailer that you can see. And if you can take a moment and pre-order it, it means the world to me. Thank you so much. Also, if you ever wanted to learn Photoshop, now is the time. My new course, Photoshop for Photographer, is out. It's got over 66 videos, very short, between three to eight minutes. I cover a lot of things. And check out, there is a link at the end of this video where I show you a full presentation and I give you two free lessons for free. All right, if you ever wanted to buy a course from me on Photoshop, this is it, my best course ever. Mesdames et messieurs, see you tomorrow.